because I broke this out of another slide, uh, out of the other antitrust regulation. But we've talked about this one. This was already one of them in the other chapter 10 anyway. When monopolies show up, you have higher prices, less to choose from, slower innovation, they're not that big for hurry to improve, and lower employment because when prices are higher, we ain't gonna buy as much. If we ain't buying as much, they ain't gonna make as much, right? So we already know that. So the one thing that I pulled out is this the costs of regulation. When the government sets rules for the monopolies, or for any company, even for us, like speed limits, whatever law the government passes, it, it costs us as a society three different ways. Number one is the administrative costs, the cost for them to make the rules in the first place. You know, I don't, they build a highway and then some engineers got to come through there and start figuring out, well, based on this length of the straightaway and the banking of the curves and the, the hills and all that kind of stuff, and the number of houses and driveways that are coming out of the road, this is going to be the recommended speed limit for this sign, for this stretch of road that we just built. So you got to pay those engineers or whatever to be doing all the studying and doing all that math and doing all that surveying and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's getting paid for out of our taxes. So it's the cost of making rules. The cost of making rules. To decide, well, okay, electric companies, we need to regulate them. And so how are we going to regulate them? Are we going to do these socially optimal pricing at the cost plus price? How are we going to do that? No, that's coming up with the rules. And so you're paying all your Congress creditors to be coming up with the rules and all the lawyers and all that kind of stuff that are involved in coming up with the rules. Then there's the compliance costs. Once the rules are in place, it costs money to make sure the rules are enforced. The government has to check on the power companies to make sure the power companies are paying or charging the right price to the customer. So basically, we have to sell them a front check. Yeah, make sure. Okay, they, the administrator, they make they come up with a speed limit saying that the road is speed limit 45 miles an hour. Compliance costs, having a cop out there every once in a while pulling people over for speeding, right? And how much are they paying those cops to be out there? $40,000 a year plus the cost of their equipment and that kind of stuff, the cost of the car, the insurance, all that kind of stuff, probably $100,000 a pop to have a cop out there. Just so you know. So, to make laws, pass the laws, and then efficiency costs is, well, if our laws ain't right, if our laws need to be adjusted, well, we've got to make corrections. And so, or how are bad rules going to be messing with things? <coughs> and if you know what a catalytic converter is. Okay, a couple head shaking. For those of you that don't, catalyst in your chemistry class, it aids in chemical reactions. Your car, my car, all in the exhaust pipeline has this catalytic converter. That your exhaust fumes, when they leave your engine, they have to go through this catalytic converter to grab out various pollutants before they go out into the atmosphere. That and then okay the muffler to keep the car from being so loud. The presence of the catalytic converter and your muffler is reducing the airflow of the air going through your engine which reduces your power, reduces your fuel efficiency. Your car can run faster, smoother, and more fuel efficient if you did not have a catalytic converter, you did not have a muffler on it. I mean, and I'm talking probably 10%. You can, probably, you can boost your miles per gallon probably about two, three gallons, two, three miles per gallon at least, depending on which car it is. If you were just simply disconnect that catalytic converter. So, how much extra gas, clean, are we using as drivers in America because our cars aren't as fuel efficient because they passed this law putting these catalytic converters on the back of our cars to keep from polluting the air as much? That is the cost of society that we have to think of. That's called how much money out of your paycheck extra are you spending on all this extra gas you're spending because this rule isn't working. How many extra, what else could you be doing? What else could you be buying? How much extra time could you be sleeping? But instead, you got to work that extra couple hours a week and get the extra money for the extra gas to put this thing on your tailpipe. 
So, okay, what do you do? You do like Harry does. You know, he goes and gets the car inspected, then he goes home that afternoon, he rolls up underneath the car, he removes the catalytic converter, and that takes 45 minutes. He removes the catalytic converter, pulls it out, and put, put, puts a hunk of pipe in there. And then, you know, next August comes back around, he's like, oh, dang, and he looks at the he goes go rolling right out here, he pulls that hunk of pipe out there, sticks the catalytic converter back on there, and he takes and gets inspected again, right? So that just spent a couple hours worth of his year, every year, taking the catalytic converter off and putting it back on in order to get the better fuel and put the efficiency. So you know he's getting better fuel efficiency, he's lost a couple hours of his life every year, right? Better than a couple hours every day to take the extra time. Yes, yeah, but that's the choice you gotta make. But then that curious guy looking himself in the mirror knowing when he's driving up and down highway, he's like killing spotted owls or whatever. And they're jagging to dust and all the clouds of smoke coming out of the back of his car. I think he knew so many times, but the school still used to philosophy on school <coughs> yeah um you gotta make sure you're not gonna volunteer later because then fall off so, but just you know, we are not as efficient as we could be and, and you know, all of this kind of stuff costs so whenever the government is starting to make rules it's going to have a cost thing and how much is it going to cost okay so maybe we're getting our because of the monopolies, we're getting our electricity for 12 cents a kilowatt hour instead of 13 cents a kilowatt hour. But then think of how much extra money are we paying in taxes every year to pay the people to come up with the updated electrical generation laws and rules for the state, the state corporation commission, to pay for their investigators that are going out to these power plants and monitoring the, how they're producing their electricity, to pay for the lawyers and accounts that are going through books when they're sitting there trying to justify buying all of these new utility trucks and selling off all the old ones and all that kind of stuff. So in the long run, it's not worth it. So in the long run, we may only be paying 12 cents a kilowatt hour instead of 13, but we may end up paying that extra pain that we're saving week after week after week, or we may be paying that much and more to Uncle Sandy in Virginia to pay the money to make this stuff happen in the first place. So if you add that in, maybe you end up paying the same 14 or 15 cents a kilowatt hour that you would have been paying if they would have, the government would have stayed out of it. And that's the thing where the government's got to be looking at what is better for society. Do we get out of the way and let the business do itself and reduce these costs to society? Or do we get involved Put these costs in, in the hopes that it's going to reduce the cost of electricity and ways of balance a bit. And Republicans and Democrats have different ways that they think about it. The Republicans are like, less rules, let businesses be more efficient, and they'll be able to lower their prices, and we get to lower our taxes, and things go smoothly. Where Democrats are more of the no businesses are going to be cutting corners, so we've got to put these rules in place to make sure that they do things the way we think things ought to be done, and so we've got these costs and forcing them to lower their prices. Either way, we're paying. It's just a matter of how much of what we're paying is going to the power company directly or how much of it is going to the government. But either way, we end up paying. Ain't no such thing as free lunch. Ain't no such thing as free electricity. So, this will be the only question that's going to come from this chapter that's on the test. Just identify the three costs. Uh, so, there may be three cheap vocabularies that would show up in a matching section, if I did a matching section or something like that. So, can we just put AC? No. And then it's it like, I, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, matching section, true and false, mumble, true. I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, this is obviously the only slide in this chapter that I can't use, right? That's it. Uh, but what I don't have slides for, what I just flat out absolutely ran out of time for, is <coughs> there's cost to society. We talked about it. And ultimately, who's responsible for paying them? Us as people, but mm, should somebody else in society sort of maybe be doing it? No. Well, but but the government is us. But sort of the businesses. So the catalytic converters are on the back of our cars to help reduce pollution in the environment. 
So that is costing you and me extra money to help keep the environment clean. Um, is, but there's other people in society besides just you and I that should be on the hook for helping to keep the environment clean. Like companies and businesses, right? Yeah, all of their trucks and cars have catalytic converters on them too. But there's other things too. Um, like um, just like we have a catalytic converter on our tailpipes of our cars, all these manufacturing plants that have big chimneys out there that have smoke pouring out of the top and all, they have basically catalytic converters in the smokestacks of their chimneys. So those things, so they catch a bunch of pollution and that kind of stuff too. The idea is thinking is, is how can we as a government, how can we as a society try to encourage businesses to reduce their pollution? Because let's say in most cases, businesses are doing a whole lot more polluting or doing a whole lot more polluting than we do. Yeah, how much pollution do y'all do? Okay, occasionally an empty soda bottle blows out of the back of your pickup truck, and otherwise it's just it's all the fumes blowing out of the exhaust pipe of your car. That's part of it, right? That's about it, for most of it. Right. Cigarettes. Okay, cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's some grass in the meeting that's on fire around going home yesterday. Probably too much of a cigarette. Anyway. Um, but you put for business, how much toxic fumes and stuff do they put out there? So, is there things that the government, that societies can do to try to encourage them to cut back on pollution? Number one is, well, we can set the rules. This is how much you can put in the air and no more. And if we find you dumping more than you're supposed to dump, compliance, we find you dumping more than you're supposed to dump, then you can be fined and that kind of stuff, or we can shut you down or whatever we're going to do. So we can sort of threaten you like parents do with the kids. You know, clean your room, I'm giving you a beating, right? Well, what's the other ideas of parenting? You do that and I do something. Yeah, you do that and I give you a reward. I give you an incentive to keep your room clean. Instead of a beating, you know, you clean your room and I give you ice cream. But of course, there's a lot of parents that are like, well, I ain't going to be rewarding you for doing something you should have done anyway, right? That was my father. Okay, you can't reward companies with ice cream. So how can you reward reward them? By not charging. The you can the government does things like they'll, they'll do tax breaks. If you lower your standards, lower your pollution or whatever, everybody that's doing this, we're gonna charge X amount of taxes, but if you give you pollution low, we're gonna charge you a lower amount. Or you're going to, as a company, you're going to install solar panels to help reduce how much coal electricity you use. We, the government, will give you a subsidy to help you do that. The government does that for you and I as well. Up until a few months ago, if you were to buy an electric car, you could have gotten about $8,000 tax credit, which just about covers the difference between the cost of, well, for a hybrid, just about covers the difference between the cost of a hybrid and a regular gas powered car. Not quite, but it would almost make a difference. But that tax credit is on what they can do that kind of thing. So you do you you try to step forward and do something, and we'll help you cover those expenses by tax credits. If they've got creative on some things. That they they call them uh, dude, my my mind just blank. Um, credits, pollution credits. What they'll tell a company is. We'll let you pollute, but you have to buy permission to pollute, to pollute. And there's a limited amount of pollution that we're pollution rights that we're going to sell. So, and they sell up. I'm going to make up some. I don't know how to do it. You can pour 10 million gallons worth of acid in the river. I just make it. That, that's what they're going to sell. You've got you, the company. Parish Tobacco just got you, you bought the contract for the right to pour 10, what is it, 10,000 gallons into the local river. Well, if they don't pour 10,000 gallons in there, say during this course of the year they only pour 9,000 in there, what do they have? The, they have the permission to pour one of the 100 gallons left, they can turn around and sell to somebody else. 
because you know Sam's small, he's got a small business, and they work with him for him to buy a 10,000 gallon contract. But maybe he can buy it onto and piggyback off of somebody else's company. So the parish farm, they're like, well, the more efficient we get, the less of the pollution we get to do, the more of that pollution rates we can sell to somebody else and actually make money off of it. So it's a way to incentivize, well, maybe we didn't make any profit growing our soybeans and pumpkins this year, but maybe we can get a little bit of profit from selling our right things to other people, kind of thing. So the, they, they've got these credits and stuff in place, kind of things, where it's sort of, you can trade these credits on, it's like a commodities market works kind of like a stock market, or works kind of like the, the, the futures and options markets that we talked about last semester, or kind of thing, where you can sit there and buy and sell these things. So there are people that, I'm not planning on polluting, but I think there's going to be people in a few months that are going to be desperate to pollute. So I'm going to buy this contract now, and I'm going to turn around and sell it to them in a few months' time. When they're desperate, I'm going to sell it to them and make some money at it. So you could, there's businesses that are going to get involved in that. And that's, that's just, it's just anything that the government can do to get businesses to want to lower their pollution. Noise pollution, chemical pollution, water pollution, air pollution, whatever it is. What can we do to make them want to do it? Because if where's yeah, even noise pollution. That's what your muffler is about on your car. Um, the, the air pollution. That's, it, it, you go to pig farms there in North Carolina. You know when you near a pig farm because you ain't got to be very near and you smell it. And there's a lot of people that have issues with that. But you kind of shouldn't know if you're. It's going to smell when you buy a house near a pig farm. If you don't like the smell of a pig farm, don't buy a house near a pig farm, but then you got the people that are suing the pig farms because it stinks where they live. That kills me. So unless they were there before the pig farm. Yeah, if they were there before the pig farm showed up, then they have a complaint. But most of the people that are suing, no. Because of what's happening is Raleigh is expanding. All the suburbs around the Raleigh is expanding as they're heading to the southeast. That's where a bunch of big farms are, so the new, newer, hip suburbs are moving farther and farther out, and it will be closer and closer to, oh my. But some sucker done, sucker be the spending $250,000 on a house that's unfortunately occasionally upwind or downwind from pig farm. So, I just, if you can buy a house, do your research, check out your neighborhood. Don't just check out the schools, right around the neighborhood. I'm just saying, because it may be more than just the school system, this thing is in that area. Um, so, if the government can come up with some kind of little incentive plan thing, to where Carrie and his family, they purposely, well, we want to reduce how much we're polluting because the, more, the less we pollute, the more money we make, they're voluntarily doing it. So, what does the government not have to do? Spend a whole bunch of time staring at them. It's just like for parents. If you can convince your kids that they want to keep their room clean, if you can get the kids to want to keep their rooms clean, you ain't got to tell them three times a week to go upstairs and clean the room. They're going to do it because they want to. If you can get them to buy into the when your room is messy, when you walk in, you're going to step on things and hurt your foot, but you step on things and break the toys, and you ain't got anything anymore. So that's why you should want to keep your room clean. And then if you've got that kid that wants to keep the room clean, like it's easy as a parent. And that's what we as parents want. Y'all don't know yet, but that's what you as parents want. You want the kids to want to study. You want the kids to want to do their homework. You want the kids to want to keep their room clean. You want the kids to want to feed their pets. Because then you can sit on the couch and watch TV while the kids are taking care of your business. <coughs> Playing on the phone or whatever. <laughs> so you don't have to spend as much time doing this. You may not have to spend as much time doing this if you can come up with some kind of programs to make them want to do better. And so that's some that's where some of the creativity and pollution law and uh, it's especially pollution that I'm not talking about, but in other environmental laws and that kind of stuff in government, some of the creativity in government's coming into that kind of field. How can we motivate people to want to do better in a way that we don't have to be the heavy handed staring at over their shoulder doing the audits for the accountants and that kind of stuff instead. So if you want a creative and interesting government job, well, 
maybe not interesting, but you want to create a government job, maybe go in this direction, come up with some environmental laws, and help the planet at the same time. So, any questions on that? Okay, well, that's going to cover it for the test. Um, if